Good morning, I'm Sarah Sapsanama. Let's begin with the top stories of the hour. Premier Oli's UN General Assembly visit taken as a chance to earn confidence of the international community on Nepal's efforts for transitional justice, also to voice for the release of Bipin Joshi held by Hamas. Tourism businesses growing concerned as tourists cancel their bookings and reservations for the upcoming tourist season. Donald Trump's sentencing in the Manhattan hush money criminal trial postponed until the U.S. presidential elections, which is going to be held on 5th of November. And Taylor Fraze survives an epic fight against American compatriot Francis TFO to reach his first major final at the U.S. Open. Prime Minister K.P. Sharma Oli is heading to New York on the 21st of September to attend the 79th UN General Assembly. He is scheduled to address the General Assembly and the Summit of the Future, which will be his second time. The international community has been closely watching Nepal's peace process, and Prime Minister K.P. Sharma Oli's upcoming participation at the UN General Assembly comes fresh from the endorsement of Transitional Justice Bill. <laughs> The Transitional Justice Bill has been welcomed by the United Nations and the international community. However, they have continued to keep an interest on the implementation of laws, appointment of office bearers at the Truth and Reconciliation Commission and the Commission for Investigation of Enforced Disappeared Persons and also justice delivery to the victims. Also at the heart of interest lies punishment to the guilty. The upcoming UN General Assembly address is taken as an opportunity for the Prime Minister to inform the world about the progress and also give assurances for the remaining works. He is also expected to present a clear and concrete plans until the peace process fully concludes. The other pressing issue that Nepal needs to continue advocating on is impacts of climate change as Nepal's mountains continue to melt and erratic and unpredictable rainfall patterns continue to take lives due to emissions by developed nations. 21 glacier lakes in Nepal are at high risk of outburst and there's a call on the Premier to make sure to highlight on the loss and damage aspect of climate change. <laughs> शिखरहरु नेपालमा रहेको कारणले गर्दाखेरि नेपालमा जलवायु परिवर्तनले नेपालको हिमालय परेको असर ले यहाँको जनजीवनमा यहाँको खेती प्रणालीमा यहाँको चाहिँ नि पर्यावरणमा परेका असरहरु संसारको चासोको विषय हुनु पर्छ भन्ने विषय नै हाम्रो जलवायु परिवर्तनको सबभन्दा ठूलो मुद्दा हुन जान्छ the other issue that needs highlighting is the ongoing wars that have had ripple effects across the globe. As Nepali national Bipin Joshi is still held by Hamas and over 40 have died in the Russia-Ukraine war fighting on behalf of Russia, the Premier and Nepal's delegation is expected to raise the issue of Joshi's release, compensations to the victims and repatriation of Nepalese nationals dead or alive in the Russian army. <laughs> सोचर मने तो गलत हो। हमरो समस्या विश्व के समस्या कोई अंग हो। हमी विश्व के समस्या ले कर दाफिर हमी पीड़ित भाई का चो। गरीबी चाहे ने हमरो मात्र समस्या हुई ना। गरीबी विश्व के समस्या हो। तो इसका गरीबी निवारण का नहीं थी हमी ले कर ये प्रयास में हमी ले अंतर्राष्ट्रीय सहयोग चाहिए ना। Prime Minister Oli also soldiers the responsibility of making sure that the sideline meetings during the General Assembly are fruitful and strengthens Nepal's bilateral relations. It may be recalled, four years ago amid COVID pandemic, the Premier had addressed the UN General Assembly through virtual medium and he had raised issues like impacts of climate change on Nepal, weapons issues and economic uncertainty among others. Not much has changed so far, while geopolitical crises have left countries in wars. This calls on Nepal to take charge for world peace as a country that is the birthplace of symbol of peace, Gautam Buddha. 
Tourism businesses are growing concerned as tourists have begun cancelling their bookings and reservations for the upcoming tourist season. Nepal Association of Tour and Travels Agent is concerned after 15 British nationals cancelled their bookings and reservations. The association has said that tourists consider Nepal a risky destination because of road accidents and air crashes and have therefore begun cancelling. Mountain expeditions are high in the months of September and October after April and May each year. Bookings are relatively better this year in comparison to 2019. However, visitors have begun corresponding about cancellations. As bookings and reservations can be cancelled 15 days ahead of the planned visit, the tourism business has remained concerned about the drop in the number of tourists visiting Nepal. The month of August, which is considered off-season, witnessed a drop of 23% in arrival of tourists in comparison to 2019. However, reservations are better for September and October in comparison to the same year. Despite being enthused for the initial bookings, businesses are worried about the growing cancellations. In addition to road accidents and air crashes, tourists arriving in Nepal have shared grave answers about the high and expensive airfare. Countries similar to Nepal can be visited at way lower prices. Impact is vis being seen on the arrival of tourists because of lack of aircrafts with the national flag carrier Nepal Airlines as well. The government is yet to introduce programs to ensure the success of the Decade for Investment in Agriculture plan included in the budget of the ongoing fiscal year without any preparation. Despite the objective of increasing productivity of the sector, barely any preparation has been seen. Instead, the farmers continue facing problems including delay of release of payments along with availability of fertilizers and seeds. With the objective of increasing productivity of the agriculture sector, the government had introduced the agro-insurance program 11 years ago. As per the program, the government is to bear 80% amount of the insurance premium. However, with the government yet to release 1 billion rupees in the past one year, insurance companies have grown concerned. Government entity, the Dairy Development Corporation, is yet to release more than 1 billion rupees in payment to dairy farmers. Despite Thursday's decision of the meeting of the cabinet to provide 600 million rupees in loan to DDC, the farmers are yet to receive their payments. While the government has announced the decade for investment in agriculture, the price of food grains and vegetables have increased by 20% in the past year. There is an opportunity to increase productivity of the agriculture sector by providing technical support to the farmers. However, this opportunity has not been grabbed. Tragedy is such that the farmers have been struggling to receive chemical fertilizers, seeds and other technical support. There is a trend of formulating programs with the objective of benefiting the farmers, but they never even see the light of the day. The young population of the country is not attracted towards the agriculture sector as they prefer basic employment opportunities elsewhere. The government does not have clear programs to reduce the import of daily essentials like rice, potatoes and onions among others. Those other than farmers have been abusing aid of more than 20 billion rupees in the agriculture sector. Despite the sector in a sorry state, the government denies accepting the facts. While struggling to address the immediate issues, the government has also failed in formulating efficient long-term plans. Despite the prospects of increasing productivity, agri-products worth around 300 billion rupees are imported each year. Meanwhile, around 1 million hectare of arable land has gone barren in the country. Farming in such a large area of land could stop the exodus of young population and curb the trade deficit by making the country independent in agro-products. For all this to happen, the Ministry of Agriculture and Livestock Development must play an efficient role. It is time now for our segment Public Pulse, where you text us with your opinion. The question is, why have the problems of farmers related to fertilizers, seeds and price not been addressed despite the changes in the government? Your options are A, no understanding of significance of agriculture, B, pretext of inadequate budget and C, lack of coordination. The voting is on, type NEWS, select your option A, B or C and send it to 34001 to share your opinion with us. Time now for international update. Donald Trump's sentencing in the Manhattan hush money criminal trial has been postponed until the U.S. presidential elections, which is going to be held on 5th of November. Yesterday, Judge Jovan Merchan announced the decision to postpone Trump's sentencing until 26th of November. Donald Trump is the Republican presidential candidate. 
His sentencing in the case was scheduled for 18th of September, but his lawyers made every legal effort to postpone his sentencing. In May, a New York jury convicted Trump of falsifying business records and felony fraud. This was the first time in the U.S. that a former president was convicted of a crime. In his decision, Mershon wrote that this entire case requires a trial that is entirely based on the jury's decision, adding that court's decision must be respected. He also said that it should be ensured that the American elections do not have any impact on this decision. Falsifying business records is punishable by up to four years in prison, though punishments such as fines or probation are more common for others convicted of that crime in the past. If Trump wins the White House, he could potentially order the Department of Justice to drop federal election interference charges against him. He would not have the authority to end the New York State case or an election interference case in Georgia. Fifteen people, including four children and four women, have died when a bus and a pickup van collided on Agra Highway in Hathras, Uttar Pradesh, India. Fourteen others are reported to be injured in the incident. They are being treated at a nearby hospital, while four of them have been referred to other places. It is said that a van carrying about 30 people had collided with a bus while overtaking. According to Indian media, victims who are residents of Semera village in Kandoli block of Agra were returning home after attending last rites when the pickup vehicle collided with a bus from Aligarh depot. Hathras Superintendent of Police Nipon Agarwal has informed that the identity of those who lost their lives in the accident is underway. Adding that the department is investigating the cause of the crash. Chief Minister Yogi Adityanath has instructed the officials of the district administration to provide proper treatment to the injured. Prime Minister Narendra Modi has said that the road accident in Hathras is very painful and devastating. He's also announced that the families of those who lost their lives in the accident will be compensated 200,000 rupees each from the Prime Minister's relief fund. He also said that 50,000 each will be given to the injured. Congress leader Priyanka Gandhi has also expressed grief over those who lost their lives in the incident. Moving on, Thailand's King Maha Vazira Longkorn, Swarnin Prime Minister Petang Tharn Shinawatra and 35 cabinet ministers in Bangkok yesterday, ushering in a new government in the Southeast Asia's second largest economy after a period of political turmoil. The 38-year-old leader of ruling Few Thai Party was elected by parliament last month to become Thailand's youngest prime minister after her predecessor, Sreta Thavisin, was dismissed by a court order over an ethics violation. Dressed in u official uniform, Petung Tarn and her cabinet ministers swore their allegiance in front of King Vazira Longkorn and Queen Suthida in a ceremony at Bangkok's Dusit Palace. The youngest daughter of the divisive former premier Thaksin Sinawatra, Petung Tarn, has not served in government previously and will face challenges on multiple fronts, including a floundering economy. She is also the second woman and fourth member of the Shinawatra clan to hold Thailand's top elected position, with three previous premiers removed by coups or court decisions. A 15-year-old Maryland high school student died yesterday after he was shot by another student inside the school bathroom at Joppa Town High School. Harford County Sheriff confirmed about the incident. He said that Warren Curtis Grant of Edgewood, Maryland, was shot in the bathroom shortly after noon by an unidentified 16-year-old who then fled the scene. He was given first aid by the school nurse and the police officer assigned to the school. He was then airlifted to Johns Hopkins Hospital where he was pronounced dead. Police arrested the 16-year-old suspect in a nearby neighborhood but did not immediately find the weapon. The sheriff said that the suspect will be tried as an adult. That's all for the moment. Thank you for watching. Bye for now.